me see. So while we're waiting for people, I just want to like introduce what the Blab is about. I, uh, if you're familiar with YouTube, uh, YouTube changed the way it does animation. Uh, for instance, like they uh, monetize based on watch minutes instead of views, which is hurting animation. And then there's all these videos about, oh, how do we make money or how do we produce more content from our animations because they take so long to make. We don't want to what, you know, uh, and you only get like two or three minutes, uh, you know, for a few months worth of work at the end. And it's just hard to uh, maintain a crowd, uh, you know, if you only make four or five of them per year. So what this Blab is about, uh, I want to discuss and brainstorm ways to, you know, pretty much get more content out of your efforts. Uh, so that way you're constantly push, p putting out a video, uh, you know, like one or two times a month, even if you're short staffed or one or two people. So, yeah, so we're going to talk about like different things like, you know, how to vlog, uh, how to make shorter episodes or um, web comics based on the series. Uh, and different version, and not only tutorials, but different uh, versions of tutorials, like uh, you know, like maybe like just quick two to three minute uh, overviews of your project files. Uh, I was thinking about doing a mean tweets where I read uh, trolls on Twitter just to be funny. Trolls, yeah, those are fantastic. So yeah, and so yeah, that's that's like a quick gist of what I want to talk about. Is just you know how how do we main, remain productive? Uh, despite, you know, the, you know, we are productive because, you know, it takes forever to animate, but just how to keep on, keep the audience, uh, attention going. E-Boy writes, I am iPhone, making an iPhone animated series. Any tips for selling that? So, yeah, so, Beatcoin, Beatcoin, what's Beatcoin? Oh, well, it, I, I'm not sure whether it has an impact in what, uh, with animation or not, but it's, it's, I... I've been kind of interested in it. And again, I'm a medical professional, so <laughs> I I am not sure whether it would have any impact. But it's it's something to do with the um, streaming of video and and easier uploads and things like that. And I, I think it was interesting what you said because um, I, I just read a criticism of YouTube changing their monetization for everybody. Yeah. And. And I didn't realize, you know, I wouldn't have thought about the impact on animation. But as we look at our our cartoon series, um, and I've been reading, you know, a lot of different cartoon blogs. But the way kids are watching, or the way people are watching the animation now, has changed. So you don't necessarily have to go through a network. For me, a demographic of five to eleven year olds to a cartoon network or um, a Nickelodeon. In fact, I may not want to go there. And so then where, where do you go to monetize that? And maybe anime studios, I mean, has anybody thought, uh, or is there already, and I don't know about it, uh, a medium just for animation, like a, like a Netflix for animation or something? Uh -huh. Not that I'm aware of. Uh, you probably could pitch to different networks, hopefully. Uh, I know there's Newgrounds.com that's been around for a while. I just signed up for that. It, it seems to be going fairly well. It seems more oriented towards uh, Flash games. That seems to be its bread and butter. So I'm kind of skeptical. But uh, whenever I upload something, I do get a bunch of views right away, uh, unlike YouTube. Like, I just put up a YouTube animation uh like a day or two ago, like at a hundred views, a little over a hundred views, which is not that much, but on new grounds, it has like five or 600 right now. So it, right out so the gate. Yeah. I, I, this, this crazy kid I got hanging out at my house through, he's a couch surfer mm -hmm. and he is using a uh, tweet deck. Are you familiar with tweet deck? Tweet deck. Is that, uh, it sounds familiar. Is that, is that kind of like a uh, Hootsuite? It, yes, but let me tell you how they're using it. And this might be eBoy. This might be something you're interested in too. I'm putting it in the thing. So TweetDeck, it really is kind of like a Hootsuite or uh, something so that you can put multiple of your accounts on and then send it out. But what they've done is they've said, okay, um, why don't you you take your Twitter account, put it in. I put my Twitter account. You find some other large accounts or people with a, an account. And then you can go in and then retweet on all of the accounts. So it's an it's aggregating a bunch of people into an account, 
and then you can retweet. Now they've got a lot of very specific rules um, wow. on how they set it up because it's not technically what Twitter wants you to be doing with TweetDeck. In fact, it's not only not tech technically not, they don't want you to do it with TweetDeck. And so there's a lot of rules that they have to stay off of Twitter's radar. Um, and, and I think it's the rules that the tweet decks he's using are, are really, um, wise anyway, you know, no hashtags, no links, because when you start doing a hashtag, if you have 50,000 retweets and it's all going into the hashtag, you can tell it's a spam or it looks like spam and people don't pay attention to it. So, but that, that would be one way for a group of like-minded animators to, um, get their message out to a larger audience. Um, as far as eBoy, do you have a a website or anything like that? One thing in looking at this, I've been studying affiliate marketing because crowdfunding ultimately, and anytime we're trying to promote anything, you've got to have a, a ready-made audience. And so, um, you know, getting getting a Mailchimp or a Weber aggregator for your website so that you've got an audience that when you have a new product that you can push that out to that audience all at once um, and you know really being smart about the marketing um, with that um, we ultimately hired a PR marketing firm to help us out with our, our series because I mean we we've got a you know you guys know this takes a lot of time this and it's very if you don't have the talent like me it's very expensive as well um, it, to do a quality product I think there's a lot of uh, parallels between affiliate marketing and um, crowdfunding and getting the word out there and using um, you know using that industry kind of the lessons from that industry um, crosses over to this industry for sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I definitely want to talk more about that. Uh... But I'm interested. I, I was so excited to see anime or any kind of cartoon thing. So I'll shut up and I'll listen. I, I'm, I'm taking notes already. Awesome. Awesome. We got Mike boss. So I want to get him introduced and hopefully Dan Drake will take a seat. Oh, and speaking of Twitter, like one thing I've noticed is, um, you know, access, quick access to whatever you're, you're promoting is a good way to uh, ensure a good crowd. For, and what I mean by that is if you tweet or spread an animation that takes a time commitment of a few minutes from people, which some people don't want to give. And, you know, but you want to like, if you start sharing it to other animators, even though they, you would think that they would have a, uh, um, uh, empathy f with that and say, Oh, I'll look at other animations. But the thing is that's so tiring and exhausting. Um, cause there's not really like a network you can do with another animator cause it's just so much work. But what I found is, if you share your uh, animations with voiceover artists uh, on the, on the boards or on Twitter, because voice acting is so easy to do, you know, it's like a few minutes on their microphone, they send email to you. Uh, you have their attention right away, and I've had so many conversations uh, back and forth on Twitter with voiceover artists, and and they were spreading and actually paying a lot of attention to a anything I animated. So that's a good thing to keep in mind is like you know if there's a quick way to like network very easily with like a certain demographic to go for that uh you know if you send it to another animator it, it's like uh more animation networking. Yeah, I, yeah our big demographic is mommy bloggers daddy bloggers parent yeah. bloggers and what we're trying to do then is actually engage them in what are the problems your kids are facing then put those problems out then come up with innovative solutions and then us integrating that into the script and so it really makes entertainment instead of the one-way street a two-way street um, and we'll see. I mean, it'll either work or it won't. Um, hopefully it does. But I, I think that's really interesting, too, with the voiceover actors. Um, yeah. And that's, it's, again, it's, it's such a quick and easy transaction. They can't imagine doing voiceover work for you because it takes them a few minutes and it's a quick email to you. And, then, right. and likewise, I, I actually need that. So I actually want to communicate with them when they reply to my email so i'm like yeah right away what kind of hashtag do you use for them uh you just go on the the twitter sites uh you just go on the internet you can go it doesn't not even have to be twitter like i've went on gotcha. uh, message boards twitter has been the most active for that but like you just look up vo there's voice acting groups uh like i think there's vo voice actor 
uh, and then I forgot what the name of the other one is, but like if you just type in voice acting on Twitter, you'll come up with all these accounts and they publish articles gotcha. and how to's and networking stuff. And you just hashtag them or you just make, start following a few people and start, you know, you know, yeah. networking yeah. Gary Vaynerchuk style with them. And they'll, they'll be very receptive to your animations and you actually need, you both need each other's services and they're both pretty yeah. much affordable and easy to do. <laughs> what do you do for music? Music, there's I use usually royalty free stuff online. YouTube, I actually found out YouTube has a great resource. It's not the best because it's MP3 and not WAV files, uh, right. but it's a lot of people do not know YouTube actually provides a large library of uh, free music and sound effects for you, huh. which, which is very convenient because a lot of the sites uh, want you to log in and do this whole rigmarole where you, right? Yeah, but YouTube's easy, and then I have a friend that i used to work with that does composing so sometimes he just he did the closing tag for my animation uh like a week or so ago what's a url or i i'd love to look at your stuff is it on anime yeah. studio i'll type it right down in cinema.com okay i typed it in the url right there and you can just my it's that's also my username on youtube ah clever got it all right i i love it when people get it yeah, I didn't get it. I, I didn't want to even try to pronounce it. And yeah, that's that's very clever. Love it. Well, I'll go check it out. Do you know the guys from Shadow Closet? I have not, no. They've got they just crowdfunded a um pretty clever um cartoon called uh what are the Misfits or something like that. It's a got a it's got an interesting premise and um I think they raised over a hundred thousand. Oh, that's that's a lot of money. I have to. Ch I'll, I will have to check them out if you can send me the link there. But um, yeah. So yeah. So tell us about uh, kickstarting. How did you uh, get your uh, communities together to get that much? Is that just? Oh, that's what we're doing now. That's that's the magic with any of this crowdfunding is is developing the community. And so we start Sunday with our landing pages, oh, with nice. our websites, launching all of that. Hey. Nice. Nice. All right. All right. Hey, doing, Mike? This is uh, Aaron. Uh, do you want to give yourself a quick int introduction again? Sure. It's Eric. E R I C. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can call. You can call. Trust me, that's not the worst thing I've been called. Um, <laughs> and I'm I'm just crowdfunding uh, animated uh, adventure cartoon. Uh, it's uh, mostly a social entrepreneurial project for my foundation. I have a foundation that donates tandem bikes to blind kids all over the world and fundraising sucks and i thought i'd like to do something that would be interesting and so i had this cartoon concept in my head for about 25 years and through crowdsourcing um found put together i i think would be considered a world-class team and and we're just uh, now getting ready to ramp up to start our ramp up to the crowdfunding actual campaign on indiegogo in february okay cool well, nice yeah. to meet you. I'm Mike, and I'm just a hobbyist. <laughs> oh, nice. Awesome. Yeah, I'm sure. No, he's awesome. Oh. He, has, he has very complex anime studio rigs up and running. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah, so Mike, um, pretty much this whole blab is about actually launching a series. Uh, nothing too complex. It's just, um, you know, instead of waiting two or three months between each episode and then risking it not having be viewed, uh, it's just ways how to milk more content out of your animation efforts, uh, whether it be tutorials, uh, vlogs, uh, overviews of your project files, uh, making miniature comic strips. It's just a way to get more content and delivery out to people so they remember you. And more importantly, so, so get more bang for your buck. I mean, uh, I have to get into the habit of re recording every anime studio project I do just so it's there and people learning the pro program can have more uh, content. And all right, so... So, Mike, are you doing anything uh, uh, series-wise, or I know you do a tutorial series. I do, yeah, yeah. I do the live thing where I'm just and people can hear me breathing and uh, you know scratching and hitting the keys and stuff. And um, I try to play music over it, but it doesn't seem to work usually. But um, no, I'm working on something, but it's it's like I've always said, it's probably bigger than than me because I'm you know I'm a one man thing, and I've never even asked anybody like I, before I logged out, you guys. Um, we're talking about, uh, I think music, and you said something about voices. Um, 
but I haven't even asked anybody to do voices and it's just going to be like my friends if they're, you know, <laughs> any good. It. As far as music, uh, I, um, what's his name? Um, Incompetech. I mean, that guy's awesome. There's another guy, Technoax. Uh, he, they do it all the same free and Technoax with a K. I subscribe to his YouTube and he's, he's usually releasing a new song every twice a week or at least once a week. And it's usually pretty good stuff. Oh yeah. So in terms of building an audience, I guess we could, we could start off with that. Uh, yeah, I went to like this animation event at UArts uh, where I used to go, uh, you know, 11 or so years ago, but um, they had an animator by the name of Paul Freilanger who did the old Sesame Street animations. And he said something that was really interesting to me when making an animation, whether it's a series or just an individual short. Uh, he, he says, like, the, uh, the mainstream audience with the cute and fuzzy animals is oversaturated. Go for a specific demographic that you know the culture of. And that way, once you make that animation, you have a very quick and easy, easy delivery system uh, right away. Uh, for instance, he did a... Uh, a short animation about uh, sailors and a sailing culture because he owned a boat and then he made sure each animation that the knots were actually the knots that sailor use and he knows all these sailors and these sailing publications so he says I can get this sold right away I have all these connections uh, and the instant someone sees the, the cover and knows what it's about uh, they'll watch it uh, whereas you know uh, and then you know a lot of the young kids that were in attendance there uh you know, they're all doing all these, you know, the stereotypical cartoon stuff. And he was like, yeah, everyone does that. No one, that's not going to make you stand out. So anyone have any thoughts about that going uh, super targeted uh, versus mainstream? That seems to be the thing nowadays. Um, well, I agree with him. I mean, uh, Ralph Bakshi mm -hmm. is, he was basically the same way as far as what he would say. You know, mm -hmm. he, his animations were out there. Um, he did a bunch of a bunch of like even like feature length stuff like this one fire and ice and then what was the other one um uh, i'm horrible with names so it's not like it didn't make a you know it obviously made uh an imprint on me i just i can't can't remember names let's see a uh, cool world that was the one that cool people world, would know that? That's him and wizards. Yeah, so that's one thing I've been doing. Like with my, with my series, it's targeted towards a video video community and a self employed, uh, you know, videographers out there. Uh, and mainly because since I know them already, I know I have uh, eyes on it already. And what's cool is not only will they relate to it, uh, if, but uh, you know, if they actually need animation work done, I've kind of monopolized that their attention. If that makes sense. So even yeah. If, yeah, I mean, if, even if no one actually sees the animations or if they don't do well on YouTube, uh, you know, you still have easy networking. Like if someone needs an animation done, I, you know, that's how you make art sustainable. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Dan is audible and it's just a blank can you, screen. Can you hear me now? I, I can, can hear him. Okay. Well, that's something. <laughs> awesome. I, I will impose a picture of your head right here. <laughs> when I put this online, and I will animate your mouth, and no, I won't. Uh, <laughs> all right, but yeah. So, good. all right, so yeah. So pretty much what this blab is about, Dan, is we're pretty much instead of um, spending months on end making a single animation and then risking it not do as well, and then have people forget about us because you know you can only do like a four or five good animations per year. Uh, we're trying to get. Uh, figure out ways and brainstorm ways to get more content out of what we do, such as, you know, videotaping everything we do from uh, the voiceover act acting, uh, you know, for outtakes, uh, screen reads, uh, vlogs for tutorials, overviews of your projects, uh, mean tweets of Twitter trolls, uh, and even, you know, comic strips of your work, uh, maybe done in Manga Studio using your anime studio figures, uh, just so you have quick one pagers online. Uh, so pretty much we're trying to, you know, brainstorm ways to get more content out of our efforts uh, so we can deliver more and people can remember our series. And we have um, Eric here who is doing a Kickstarter, a bunch of crowdfunding and has done that. And 
Yeah, so uh, if you can introduce yourself, Dan, uh, for Eric and anyone else watching. Uh, well, I'm Dan, and I'm the blank screen, and uh, <laughs> currently I'm working on an animated series with a group of people. Um, I don't know that I have a lot to share as far as the correct way to do things because we're still trying to figure out our pipeline. Um, it's interesting. That's also why I really like the the topic for nice. tonight's uh, discussion because I, I think there are a lot of different ways it can work and a lot of different ways it can not work. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it kind of depends on your team and the experience that they have and what you're looking to try to create and you're spot on with just the idea of like how difficult it is to work on animation and how long it takes and keep people interested in the meantime uh, yeah. when you're not already an established well with lots of money running through you lots of uh, experienced animators there's a huge jump between uh, how quickly you can turn things out um, I think most I assume most animators or most of the people using anime studio are probably doing the solo thing. And then a lot of just sort of experimentation, little things here and there enjoying themselves. But as far as pulling together a full production, there's a whole other realm of things you got to be on top of and, and work through. Um, so anyway, that I just, I think the conversation is very interesting and I'd like to, hear who I have to say and what they've dealt with and I can jump in with anything I'm dealing with as well. Actually, actually Dan, I think you made a really good point is that, you know, uh, a lot of people are focused are, you know, your specialty is in animation. And, you know, if it, you're a single person that's doing that, your expertise isn't in business development. Your, your business, your expertise isn't in marketing and, how do you then gain an audience? And, and it's really a whole nother different specialty. And you're very passionate about animation. Um, and I, I'm coming from it from a whole different aspect is I, I'm pretty good at getting attention for different projects and things, but I never, I'm not an animator. I'm not even like I, I, my joke at the beginning was I can't draw a stick figure that you'd recognize, but I do know how to build a crowd. I do know how to get attention. And um, I think somebody else, and it might've been you, Mike, that was mentioning that, you know, you're, or I'm not sure who, who said it, that, you know, are you doing your animation for a large audience or are you doing it for a niche? And, and I think that's, that in some ways is important to know who you are doing it for. Um, Cause if you're, if you're targeting a niche, then it, it becomes a lot easier to find your audience. Um, if it's very broad, uh, and that's one thing I, I was saying earlier, I've been studying affiliate marketing in the context of how to do my crowdfunding campaign. And that's the one thing that they really pound home is you have to know who you're targeting. Um, one from just a, how do you pay for it? Cause you know, it can become very expensive, um, just in doing your marketing and, and getting your word out. So I think finding your audience, um, who you are targeting is, is a very important aspect and understanding too, that maybe your expertise isn't doing that. And that's where anime studios could be coming in and saying, you, you've got this mastermind group of, okay, who's, who's the person that could really maybe tell me exactly what to do to get this to a broader audience. And um, I don't know, that's my two cents on, on the marketing aspect. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it personalizes the animation and it makes it more shareable. Like even if it's like a tiny detail, uh, like I said with Paul Freilinger, he made sure to have every sailing aspect nailed down to a T. And like, I kind of I wanna do that with my series. Uh, I, uh, like for instance, it's a videographer. So I, whenever I show equipment, I do not wanna do the stereotypical box with a circle on it for a camera. I actually want to model and draw actual equipment and make it look exactly the way it does. And you know, it's, it's stuff like that will very lose an audience quickly if you get it wrong. Like it, if you watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and you see a palm tree in the background. Oh God, I got addicted to that. I don't have, oh, even own a TV. 
And yeah. somebody turned me on to that stupid thing on Netflix, and I binged watched it in about three weekends. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's supposed to be like a Philadelphia series, and then like every now and then you'll catch uh, Sunset Strip in the background. I was like, that is not Philly at all. And then I just want to lose interest because I'm from Philly, and I want a Philly experience. Are you so, a Geno's or Pat's? I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. I got the meat sweats after going to both of those places. Oh, nice. <laughs> At least you've been to Philly. <laughs> but yeah, um, oh, speaking of which, uh, can you t talk about building crowds that you were talking about before, like the process? Because uh, I know you mentioned sure. a few people that uh, had successful Kickstarters and you're doing one yourself. Can you talk about like actual building crowds and details into that? Sure. I, I, well, we hired a marketing company. And also the animation company that we're using, they just hired a guy that did a successful, um, uh, it, it's essentially animation. Um, uh, in fact, I could probably put their thing, they did 3D modeling for um, dungeon games and, and uh, like D&D &D and some of these other games. Um, and they wanted $5,000 and raised 125 um, uh, euro. So I don't know what that is, what the exchange is, but that's more like 200,000. Um, the first thing that has to happen with a crowdfunding campaign is research. And that's, um, I'm, again, I'm happy to send you, message me offline um, wow. and I'll get your email address and I'll send you the research we did on crowdfunding, uh, the animation crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. um, and so you got to see, well, is there even a market for what we're, we're doing? Then it's a matter of putting together uh, landing pages and um, developing a crowd so that when you're, you're, um, you're going to go fund it, um, you've got people to reach out to. And Twitter is a great avenue, but it's not like having the emails. And I've listen i can't tell you over the last six months how many different webinars again i don't have a tv all i've been doing is studying this crap oh, wow. um and email 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 it goes back to that and so anime studio could be a real powerful um force in in helping everybody to you know getting the words out these type of um chats where it'd be real interesting to have voiceover actors and interviewing them what are they looking for um, uh, uh, the music guys. I, I mean, all, there's so much to this whole thing, having different crowdfunders, getting some of the, the successful animation cartoon um, uh, people to come on and talk about how they develop their, their web uh, presence or their, their crowd. Um, but it starts with, you know, Twitter and it's just reaching out these very powerful, I think, um, I, I think this blab is going to be a very powerful medium for everybody. Um, yeah. and, and then just not giving up after two or three or four, you know, you got to be willing to fail and fail and fail or <clears throat> nothing's a failure if you're learning something from it. Right. Yeah. And just ask my ex-wife. <laughs> uh <-oh>. um, <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's always about what, <clears throat> what could I have done better? you know, ruthless self-reflection on, on doing that. And then also putting together a team. It's very hard to do any of this in a solo, in, in a world where everybody's clamoring for people's attention. What makes you unique and different? And that's why I think a niche cartoon, that sailing cartoon sounds fascinating. If you're a sailor, sure. Why wouldn't you um, yeah. watch that? Um, somebody that's a videographer, one of my friends is won an Emmy. He, he was the videographer for The Amazing Race. He's won a couple of Emmys from that. You know, hey man, I'd, I'd push that off. And you develop this crowd that says, hey, you know, I need this. And somebody's like, hey, I know so-and-so. And, and then it becomes a networking game as well. Um, but if you're, and you have to define what your level of success that you want. For me, we want our series to go big because I want it to fund my philanthropic interests. I don't need money. Uh, well, I mean, you know, I, I've got a roof over my head and stuff. It, I'm not trying to become a gazillionaire with it. I want it to fund my philanthropic efforts, but that's my level of success. Maybe somebody else's, you know, you mentioned your YouTube um, animation you just put up had a hundred hits. Hey man, I think that's cool. That's a hundred people that came and watched, you know, hundred people that you didn't know that came and watched something that you created. Is it, 
the question is, know, how many of them are human? <laughs> huh? The question is, how many of them are actually human? <laughs> <clears throat> Whole nother subject. <laughs> Whole yeah. nother subject. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think that uh, finding your crowd, but again, this is a good forum to start doing that and bringing people on that are experts in that area. Better experts than me in crowdfunding or animation. Nice. Yeah, Mike. Mike does a lot of uh, a live streaming of uh, Anime Studio. Um, can you talk to us about like the audience you get for that, or how did you set that up? You have, you said Twitch doesn't allow. I think I think Twitch only does gaming though, right? I think they. Oh, we can't hear you. I'm sorry. I just muted my mic. Um, can you hear me now? Oh yes. Okay. Um, they didn't, and when they first started, they were only doing gaming uh, because they came over from Justin TV and they were doing all kinds of stuff, and now they have a mode called creative and i mean i think officially you're supposed to be doing it um with game related so if you're doing animation like i, I watch a lot of people 3 mod 3d modeling mods for games oh nice and, uh, uh, so it's so, or animation for games yeah right so but i, I think if you're doing like you know 70 percent of your channel is st actually streaming gameplay then you can do you know uh, the other stuff, talk shows and stuff. People do talk shows, but again, they're talk shows about gaming. Um, so, but I do it on there, and this guy got in touch with me uh, from, which I actually I haven't. I've been really bad this week. It's called WatchMeWork.com, and he set up a website oh, to uh, WatchMeWork.com. Right. Yeah, and what it is, it's it, like if I go on there right now and I click on all live streams, it's people just doing well. There's one. It's a chill stream doing art and whatnot. Oh, nice. Um, so he wanted to learn more about um, uh, Photoshop, and uh, he said there really wasn't anything that he could watch. But he wanted to watch somebody live, and there was no there was no um, outlet for him to do that. So he created this WatchMeWork.com. Yeah, that, that's a, that's a great thing to know because I actually want to um, talk about that because uh, your stereotypical tutorials uh, there are plenty of them, and they're kind of intimidating for people to do for talk to forty minutes straight. Even though I love ha the idea of having an actual person that's you know sitting right there that that type of feeling it's um instead of someone lecturing to you or yeah. you know just uh have no audio whatsoever but i also like you know as a video person i try to always reimagine uh stereotypical videos shorter or longer just to see what that does and one of the things i wanted to talk about is uh different ways to do tutorials such as do they have to be 40 minutes uh uh you could also you could just just as easily just go through your old project file on retrospect and just uh, highlight one or two uh, unique things you've done in that project and then just, just quickly talk about that and still get your message across, I believe. And, you yeah. know, yeah, not that many people do that. And I think that would be really successful. Uh, just, you know, not everyone has 40 minutes to give. And it's stressful for people to make a 40 minute tutorial. But like, if you just go an old, pro like for one thing, one weird thing I did is I made 3D arm movements in Anime Studio. So instead of me going through the trouble of making a 40 minute tutorial, I could just spend two minutes talking about, you know, how to do 3D R movements and people would get how to do it without me doing it live. Uh, you know, cause I could just do an overview in two minutes as opposed to a live tutorial in a half hour. And I don't see many people doing that. So that's like one thing I wanted to try and get your thoughts on. I think a lot of people do the tutorials like, and, and just from anime studio, cause that would be probably the only software that, uh, I'd be able to do a tutorial in, but yeah. I think people start every tutorial thinking, you know, okay, the person is a beginner. They don't know anything about it. So they go through every step and they highlight and it goes back and forth real slow as opposed to, okay, well, you know how to do this. And then you, yeah. you know, blah, blah, and this is what I do. And see, I would love this for somebody to just get on there and break down their rig. And, you know, and this is what I do for an arm movement, you know, straight on to the side, three quarter behind, whatever. Um, and just you know get it done in like you know even 20 minutes because yeah. sometimes you can it takes a while to break it down but i yeah. think that's why they end up with really long exactly, tutorial yeah. not that i mind them I, I i like both but i just would like a better balance of like you can still do retrospective overviews and still be fine i mean i think a lot of people though get bored with you get over eight minutes and you lose people uh, and a lot okay. of different now animation may be different, but I know, yeah. you know, there's so much content out there now. Yeah. Um, again, it's that differentiation in the niche. For me, I like, you know, a quick down and dirty and and not a lot of the extra fluff that you get with some different tutorials, whatever it is. Um, yeah. 
Well, I, well, and just now I thought you, I didn't think you were talking about t tutorials, but um, I, I've lately been getting into these uh, the the, new, the superhero TV shows, mm -hmm. and I just found out the CW had an animated series on a new superhero set in the same universe as Arrow and uh, the Flash, and they're seven minute episodes, and they're pretty awesome. Uh, but it's like seven minutes long, and there's like seven of them, and it tells the whole story, the whole origin story. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean they they, they get it. They're they're like okay. The other shows are an hour long. Let's do this in seven minutes and see if we get. And it's pretty good. Hmm. Nice. And and nice. what's what's the the medium for that? That was it was animated. No, but and where that, where where are they showing that? Uh, it's called uh, I think cwseed.com. So I, I the other thing I'm real interested in is we look for and, and there was a there was somebody on here C boy or E boy or something like that. That was talking about his his iPhone campaign. What other mediums? I mean, when you're doing animation as animators, are you doing it for like a TV? Are you doing it for a computer? I mean, and does that change the layout and design that you guys do? Absolutely, I do. I usually release everything in 720 because it's uh it's not a gigantic file and it's uh. And it still looks really nice in an animation. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a big difference between what I can do in 1080 and 720. So, yeah, I just do it for the internet. Uh, so it's always 1080p for me. I don't, I'm, I think I do 1080p because I'm afraid to go 720 because I do. I'm a live action video background, so I actually probably will do 4K animation, even though I shouldn't. <laughs> when a 4K starts to become mandatory. <laughs> I need more. I need more physical, more hard drive space because I get attached to stuff, and I tend to be a little bit of a pack rat. So I got to go through and clear it off. That's why I don't do 1080p. That's the real reason. That makes more, that makes more sense then. All right. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, speaking of making more content, I'll just go down like a bullet list of like ideas I wanted to pass by you guys, and feel free to chime in. Um, but yeah, so like. Like in addition to voiceover sessions, there's also a thing called table reads where people, um, it does not even have to be a voiceover actor, but it, it's it's typical in a screenwriting industry uh, to have like people read the script and you, you sign each person a part. And I recorded one of mine once and there's a lot of decent outtake material that's still, and it's still kind of be an entertaining video. Uh, so like if you do that as like a, a means to, uh, to show or put on YouTube or wherever after you're, you release your animation, because you don't want to spoil the script, obviously. But like, once you release your animation, you let a few weeks go by, then you say, "Oh, here's some behind the scenes. Here's the screen reading of it of, of us working on the script." And then, and so that's one idea I had. And then another re another is actually recording the voiceover actors uh, live, and that way you get make like an outtake reel. And you can like do two. So you have like two sources of video content there with uh, voiceover acting. So I was wondering, anyone have any thoughts on that, or how about Dan Drake? Uh, he's been quiet. <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm I'm listening in. Uh, I actually think that's a great idea, and it's something that uh, our team just did this past week. And I'm not on that side of the uh, voice actors. I would love it if they had set up a camera to to film all of it because that would be great content. I think to share. Yeah. Um, you know, so we're sort of split in that we have some people kind of thinking in terms of a lot of the things we're talking about here tonight, like how to how to keep your project relevant. We actually did have an Indiegogo campaign that was set up sort of before I joined onto the project. Uh, we raised the funds, but it's not really enough to make it a really professional gig. The good and bad news is where I'm where I'm living now, uh, it's a college town. There's a lot of talent that comes in. There's a lot of resources and there's a really strong arts based community. But it also means that those people are also ready and eager to go somewhere else. They're, uh. <laughs> you know, they're graduating and then they they go on or they're back home and then they have to go to school somewhere else. So we have to balance this, this thing out with, with some younger college kids uh, who are trying to get something maybe to go on a resume or some, some background experience. And, and we want it to be beneficial to everyone. 
but it's a it's a slow process and if you don't have a structure in place it gets it gets challenging um but they're in the mode of like I, our marketing side i guess is like you know everyone social media what do we post and they're posting little i i don't know some some bits of art here and there um and they're currently working on podcasts i guess where people are kind of talking about their involvement with it i haven't heard any of what's going on so i don't know if it's entertaining or if it's uh but they're they're at least trying that same kind of like alternate media like we're working on this but we don't have anything to show you yet <laughs> so let's talk about the things we're working on so nice. that you know that we're still working on it exactly and, that, and that's kind of the idea behind it um we again something that i'm afforded by living where i live we have like art festivals they they do some screenings of things so we were able to get the teaser that we created for the campaign into a local film festival um so that keeps people interested or at least getting new eyes on a project if you have an opportunity to get something small out like a short version of what you're working on and can be a standalone at least shows kind of what you're up to but i know i just thought of something going back to like table reads uh they're e the main reason i want to focus on them is they're easy you can get anyone they don't have to be an actor it's just uh looking over your script and you know mocking it up but the cool thing i just thought of is you could actually do that on blab <laughs> you just everyone just gives how everyone... cool would that be yes it would new episode idea <laughs> And then, you know, everyone gets, like, everyone trades, like, a copy of their animation script, and then you, like, you're, you each pick a part, and then you talk about it, and then, you, you you know, you bust each other's chops or say, oh, do this differently, do that. And... It would be good, probably, yeah. good timing and stuff. Though. Exactly, yeah. You'd have, I'd have to hook up my good mic, though. So, so it would be good quality, so you could record it, and then, I don't know. Yeah. Now, when you're talking about posting another video, would you animate that? The outtakes? Oh, no, no. It would actually be like a live action thing. So, oh, okay. yeah, it's, it's pretty much just to make the, ser make the series relevant and still promote content that's funny and entertaining. Because, you know, when you, whenever you do voiceover acting, you, you're, you're going to get plenty of outtakes. And it's always yeah. in, it's always interesting to see how the script changes for the animation and film nerds out there. Like a lot of people like like watching that stuff. It's like addicting on the behind the scenes on, uh, on DVDs and whatnot. I remember the family I got... I watch all of them. Oh, yeah. I remember Family Guy had something like that where they're doing a table read of the scene, uh, and yeah, and they had they had like makeshift sound effects, like people would joke around, and it was pretty entertaining. So I was like, hey, we, we can we can do that too, and it's not like it needs to be heavily produced. It's just you know documentary, home video footage almost uh, that you you know you'll clean up a tiny bit, but it's, it doesn't have to be Lord of the Rings. And did it's, you ever see the? There's, there's something on on uh, YouTube. And this is just a side note where they have um like basically uh ca cartoon voice legends reading like star wars and the empire strikes yes. back as their characters <laughs> that is that is pretty awesome they've done that it's it's been an ongoing thing at uh san diego comic con for quite a while like just the entire original star wars uh scripts where they have excellent voice actors doing it in the characters yeah. that they, they play and it's and for anyone who's interested in voice acting watch that i'll try to find a link um but it's amazing yeah and what's awesome is like i remember i remember saying on twitter it's very easy for animators to network with voiceover artists so you can actually get a table read on blab or periscope uh very easily uh, it seems because yeah, like voiceover acting and animation people, they you can you can network online very instantly because there's an instant need from from both of you. So you can actually get a table read on Blab with complete strangers on Twitter probably within a few hours. <laughs> I'm exaggerating a tiny bit, but that, that it just reminded me of the Twitter comment I made a few oh an hour or so back. But um, oh yeah, I wanted to talk, I'm not sure if anyone here is uh, into illustration, but I thought like if uh, so I got into Manga Studio a while back just to do backgrounds, and I thought of making one page comic strips of your characters and the cool thing about comic strips and i don't think many people realize this is you have riggable characters in anime studio you can put that to your advantage into uh, a comic book 
because they have the same problem, same character drawn over and over again, different poses. Uh, so you can export your anime studio file as PNG sequences, and then you have instant characters uh, on something like Manga Studio. And the benefit of that is, like, the whole thing about media and video marketing is you break down, uh, you know, a stereotypical delivery, like a three to five minute video, and just try to make different alterations over and over and shorter and shorter. And so the comic strip is, seemed like an obvious choice to me because it's instantly digested and shared. So uh, anyone have any thoughts about that or Dan, Mike? Um, I think that's a great idea. Actually, uh, one of my first experiences working with Flash was to try to do the same thing for a comic strip that I was making and then kind of create material in uh, in Flash that that would be reusable in that same way. Every so often, I get frustrated with a current project. I'm like, man, I can just go back to a comic strip using Anime right. Studio, and it would be so easy now. And it gives, you know, it was a lot of copy and paste and then change a little detail here and there. <laughs> um, my comic strip wasn't necessarily about... It was really based more on, on some certain poses and uh, an expression, not really high art. I don't know. Well, the jokes weren't high art. That's too <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think I think this is another that's another avenue of of how this could be used very well uh, to bring a little bit more dynamic element to a comic strip and and have it be it's not a lot of work then once you have it all set up. If you know who your characters are, you create them, and it's not even to the same realm that you want. Yeah, for an animated series with certain characters, you you just kind of make your poses and reuse them, and then have that that rig set up to kind of play around with. And I I think that's a that's a great idea. And um, even for back to marketing for a show you're in the you're currently creating, if anyone else could jump in and sort of work off of a uh, of a comic strip script you really don't have to have that much knowledge of the program to pose some characters and produce something i mean you could you can also like just give that to a friend of yours who wants to do stuff but doesn't want to do animation i mean it's a good way to delegate duties if you're working in a team yeah and yeah and another um cool thing about that is is it's uh it's a great way to get um not get writer's block because sometimes you'll think of a very funny joke but no story to go with it so you'll think so it just sits on a shelf waiting for that perfect story or you're like oh maybe i'll just write a story for to fit that hilarious scenario in and then you're like yeah i can't think of a good story so it just sits there but it can be doing something and working for you and it's a good way to test out the joke because the same uh people that read the the comic the one page comic strip aren't necessarily going to see your animation uh, so it's a good way. To, it's actually a good way to get an, another audience too, because you're getting uh, illustration people and nerds uh, into your into your animation. And I think every and you can also do like vlogs about how to do art in Manga Studio. Then you have all, this whole new market, uh, in, uh, this, this illustration art market uh, demographic interested in because all those people secretly want to be animation people. <laughs> That's my theory. I yeah. grew up. I grew up a drawler, uh, drawing. So like every illustration person secretly wanted to be an animator, and it's a good way to just network and reach out to an instant demographic. Also good for business cards and flyers. I mean, because you, you actually have something interactive. Storyboards. Does, does anyone have any experience uh, with trolls? Enough trolls on Twitter or YouTube to do like a series of mean tweets or you know. Uh, tell those people off because I was thinking about doing like a, a spin off of a mean tweet. I had one because I've only doing? started posting that uh, that watch me work stuff. Let me see if I can get to it. I don't even <laughs> because uh, he was now granted. I, <laughs> I just dropped you with bubbles. <laughs> I, I've, I've got the two the two monitors here, right? So I've got the whole studio thing over here, and then I'm doing all my work over here. So so I'm recording, and I don't see if somebody's in there talking. And this thing's not opening up. Okay, here we go. But I ended up. Never 
mind. They're, they're not there. But I, I did character design, or it was, I think that was a title of what I did on Watch Me Work. It was character design. So it went out on Google, Google uh, Hangouts and Twitch. So he commented on the Google Hangouts one because obviously it records it. And, and he was, I don't even know what he was talking about. And obviously he goes, he says something about I'm listening to you breathe and and you have to work on your character as a person and this and that. And it was like a long, I should have copied and pasted it, but I was just like, I let him respond twice and then I just kind of blocked him. I was like, <laughs> you're a wacko, man. Yeah, I mean, I cut and paste my uh, animation link a lot of places, which uh, annoys some people because they think you're uh, overdoing it, but I don't know gotta do what you gotta do i got mostly a positive response but i've accumulated a decent amount of trolls to make a decent series i think that would be a good side video as well i don't know if anyone has experience uh getting a lot, decent amount of trolls. here's a uh, thing from uh um some people i know on a uh, on twitter trolls i don't know if nice yeah that's just some how to's on how to deal with twitter trolls I don't mind the trolls. I just want to like, um, you know, make fun of them a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can, you, if you're ever having a problem with uh, thinking of ideas, which, you know, what to animate, then yeah, that's a, a great I idea. I, I, I had someone on my YouTube channel. I, I, I put the like, first episode of my series on YouTube and then someone replied, uh, you're obviously self-taught. Uh, your walk cycles are awful. Your textures are boring and all this negative stuff and then he advertised his uh animation tutorial website <laughs> so i wanted to, well, I wanted to trolls are everywhere i i tried to sell a kayak on ebay and some guy comes on and just scolds me from and sell the the guy was enough of a prick to come back and see i told you it wouldn't sell and oh my god really do you not have anything going on in your life that you're following my kayak on ebay they're they're everywhere. They're everywhere. A, an animated series on trolls would be fantastic. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, I mean, as your series goes on, I would just be funny. Just I do screen captures of all the trolls, and then I'll, I'm gonna like once they accumulate, I'm gonna like make a video, and then just assign tell, and I'll put like a link or a screen cap to let them know what episode they were referring to. Uh, so <laughs> I just thought it would be like a funny idea to get more content out there. Nice. Um, I get it up. And yeah, McCoy gets that too all the time. Yeah, I mean, the more you put yourself out there, the more you're going to get them. Yeah. In every profession, it's there's trolls everywhere. Oh, yeah. Nice. And then let me see. Oh, and another idea I wanted to talk about is... Um, when you think of ideas for episodes, do you just like uh, write them out? Because uh, then one idea I had is I, I'm taking a look at comic books, and you know how comic books they had the main series, and then they'll have like three or four different reiterations or reimaginings of the, the same character. Like you have Spider Man, the Amazing Spider Man, Spider Man 2020, New Spider Man, Old Spider Man. <sighs> Yeah, when they started all that, that's when I stopped buying comic books. Yeah, but like the um, you know, not to do that, not to um idolize that, but the, the whole reason they do that is so they can split up the writing teams and just uh have different variations, and that's like it's kind of like a similar idea I had to doing animations, whereas you have uh the the main series where which can be like four or five minute whoppers, but you know you don't want to do four minute five minute animations which are very tiring over and over again i was like is there a way to split these up into shorter episodes uh not all the time because i like doing the the longer episodes uh you know i want to do a full length episode eventually but so i but i think four or five minutes is a good practice ground whereas one and two minutes is like a different series altogether but i still want to do one to two minute animations that, just to keep the juices flowing uh, and not kill myself so i was like if, if, if there's a way to take one series and split it up into like one or two other side series that are shorter uh i'm not sure if anyone uh, does or or has thought about that strategy like uh for one for one thing like my uh animation is about a self-employed video person uh so one you know i would have the main series and now and i would have like one or two side series which is uh crank calls with deadbeat clients or dead leads 
and then those would be like one or two minute shorts and i have like two of those up already and i made two of them uh, i released two of them in a month's time well, i think that's a cool idea and so remember the old dragnet series i i don't know how old i'm my hair is gray so i'm old but <laughs> you know the the um at the end they'd say the stories are true but the names have been changed to protect the innocent and so as I was talking about our cartoon series where we want to engage the parents to come up with the problems, then the solutions, and then integrate that into the scripts. We're in a time now where we're all hyper-connected. So what if in your Twitter or you were targeting some of these uh, videographers or whoever you're trying to animate, get real stories and yeah. actually integrate and then you're doing what eboy was asking about what you were talking about before how do you find that audience how do you get that then all of a sudden not only are you they that person whoever sent it to you is going to watch it but they're going to tell all their friends hey man this guy made this cool animation about this dumbass i had to deal with and so now you you've got an, a population that is now entrenched and, and really engaged because they don't know, maybe their story is going to be what pops up this week or next week or whenever yeah, it comes out. Point, though, yeah. yeah I, I, and what I was talking about, I think is specifically to, you know, where you're talking about really almost a specific market of, you know, a, a series where it'd be very easy to engage and find people's real stories that would be funny. Um, and, and again, you, when you engage the audience, then they in turn want to smoking causes cancer in lab rats. I don't know if you knew that, Mike. Um, and I'm a healthcare provider. I have to put that in there. Uh, um, <laughs> but um, yes, I think when you can engage that audience, then you're going to get all of their audience. I think it's an interesting discussion because uh, where I'm currently at and, and what we're working with uh, right now, there, there's a lot of thought about how to market it, how, where, where, uh, where to take something. Does anyone, anyone here watch Rick and Morty? I haven't started, but I plan on, I plan on picking that one up soon. Watching it, Rick and Morty. It looks really good. Uh, Rick and Morty. I, I love the show. It's, there's a lot of absurd things that happen. It's funny. It's creative. Uh, but it's, uh, I think, probably a good example of how long you can be working on something and have it never become something. Because if, uh, Dan Royland or Justin Royland, uh, the well voice actor behind it, he, he uh, paired up with Dan Harmon of Community. But Justin Roiland has been making stupid looking cartoons for a long time. Uh, one of the first I ever saw was called House of Cosby's. <laughs> Does that sound familiar to anyone? No one saw it. Sounds scary now. Well, it wasn't scary back then. <laughs> it's funny because there's a fan <laughs> of Bill Cosby who clones Bill Cosby's in his house. Oh, no. And with varying results and it's a funny crazy show but he was shut down for making this show because bill cosby's lawyers it's like this not painting bill cosby in a very favorable light uh, this was this was a long time ago so now it'd probably be okay but the timing wasn't right then and what Justin Roiland has done with his career is a series of little one-off strange animation things that never kind of came together until he paired up with, well, or, or until they started making Rick and Morty. Uh, uh, that, And it's still not like the hit TV show, but it's working well enough and he's paired with the right people. I, I guess it, it just goes my thought on all of it is as a throwback to as you're working with animation, as you're developing ideas and styles, you're better off just creating something and putting it out there for the world to see and then move on than trying to perfect anything in any given moment. 
because you're going to spend so much time. And for anyone who's done animation, you know, you could spend a whole, like an entire week on the same scene and possibly make it better or possibly undo some good things that you've already done. It's, it's very nitpicky at that point. And you really just have to do your work, put it out there, get the feedback and move on. And until you do that, your, your practice is good, but it's not, it's not guided practice. And I, and we're, since we're talking, the link I shared about uh, the unmarketables is a ridiculous clip. If anyone has time to watch it, we shouldn't watch it right now because it is ridiculous. <laughs> but um, it's like a, it's like an animated sketch, like a sketch show clip about how they don't care about being marketable. <laughs> I just want to make my absurd comedy. And some people are fine with that. You really have to figure out what you want to do. I, there was an interesting question on here, and I, I'm definitely interested. Um, it was from Studio Pros. Other, yeah. other platforms to put the animations on. Well, Vimeo, Newgrounds, YouTube. I mean platforms besides the computer or the internet? Yeah. I, I yeah, I don't know. It, but you know, that's something I that I kind of struggle with. You know, what if we don't get a, a distribution contract with a a larger company? How do we where else do you go? But now I mean you have the choice of Netflix. Um I think HBO is buying stuff. Amazon Prime is buying stuff. Um there was yeah, the, yeah. There was um, some shows coming out. God, I got some emails on it. I don't remember what what forum they were on. And you just pay for the series. You know, you pay for the episodes or something. Um, and they were all independent films uh, that, you know, hey, come here and you watch the thing and you could just buy the, buy the film. There's a lot of that on Hulu. Or not Hulu. Um... But yeah, like Hulu, Netflix, but um, uh, yeah, the Roku, Hulu. Roku. There's a lot of channels like that that you just buy. You can just buy single series. All right. Well, I think I've got to get to bed. I got to get up in the the morning. But thanks for letting me even come awesome. on this. I I'm would have been happy being in the background. I I learned a lot. I have taken like notes and notes and oh. notes from you guys. So. Thank you. I'll, I'll look forward to watching some more of your stuff. And, awesome. and I think you've got a really great plan on what to do and, and some things. I think voiceover actors, I think interviewing different people. And I'll try to, I've been looking to try to find that one series that just got funded. Um, and they just had something come out regarding one of their voiceover actors. But I'll, I'll get that to you. And then I'll also get you the list of the crowdfunding awesome. animations that are in the last year um that we did research on so. so awesome yeah you can email me like your info and your name any websites and i can just tag it on the video somehow one there's they're going to send me the video after we're done here so i just want to tag everyone's info and whatnot so you can Perfect. email me that yeah that'll be great all right hey nice to meet all you guys thanks for the information and awesome. for somebody that doesn't really know much i i appreciate you guys indulging me so hey why don't have you a good put night. a can you put a link to your um your crowdfunding well, our crowdfunding will go live on um, uh, February 1st on Indiegogo. Oh, okay. And so right now we're in that beginning. It, it's a ramp up. It's three months of we've, we've got to have between 3,500 to 5,000 email addresses, active email addresses of people that are engaged to be able to raise. We're, our, our goal will be around 350,000. Okay. Um, and, you know, if we can hit a half a million that would be great. We've got a lot of, we've got a lot of good people on the team and I, I and um, feel free to share the email with the research on it. Um, you know, but there's the largest crowdfunding animated crowdfunding campaign to date is $980,000 and I don't have it pulled up. So I can't tell you who, which cartoon that was. Um, 
I can probably pull it up real quick, but I, I mean, I think when we did the re initial research, even we were a little shocked to find that it had been that um, successful. I mean, that's a lot of dough, but multiple, multiple of them um, that were well over um, 500,000. So several have been in the half a million range, but it's all about building that crowd um, before you even get there. But it, it, it's interesting if you decide to go, you know, that route, but that's, that's definitely the first phase of any kind of crowdfunding is researching the other people in your demographics and in your area. And that's what we were most excited about was that, um, uh, but anyway, that's it. No, I've got to go. All right. But, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I, I think what you, one of the things you've just said is, is very important uh, as a big deal is building the crowd and the fan base before you do a crowdfunding thing, because then you're scrapping for the people and you're only going to get the people, you know, if you establish yourself a little bit before you go live with a crowdfunding campaign, you already have the people you know on board, and then they can spread it from the beginning. And that that can make a huge difference, like small or large scale. Uh, yeah, and, and there's a lot of the a lot of small animations that are, you know, up there for a couple of thousand dollars. But even some of those don't get funded. And it and it's just as we we're just saying, you, you have to have your crowd pre-made. And for somebody like ourselves, where we want to raise 350,000 to a half a million dollars, um, we have to be way outside of our circle of influence. And so yeah. we have to be able to engage with, um, people that have no idea, you know, who I am or why they would want to fund me. So we've, we're, we've got to develop that compelling message that gets out there that then brings more people in. So our target, number one, is mommy bloggers, number two, crowd funders, um, and then three, animators. Um, animators, though, are, are, you know, everybody's kind of scrapping in, in that industry. Um, but I think people, if but people like to see people succeed too. So, you know, you, and if there's something that in our process that people can learn from that can help them fund their stuff, Hey man, more power to them. I, I don't want to, this isn't all about us. We want to help as many people, you know, fund their, their dreams too. So anyway, great meeting you guys. And I'll look forward to uh, sitting through some more episodes and learning a lot more about this industry that I don't know much about, but I think bringing in experts from different, you know, I, I'm, we're big into cancer. My son had brain cancer 15 years ago. And so we talk about cancer nationally. We're sponsored triathletes. We have, uh, you know, I, I was on a team with Bristol Myers Squibb. And, and so the one thing that all of these places are doing now, whether it's, and I think this industry can be the same. You've got to bring in experts that you don't even think would have application to maybe what you're doing. Maybe bringing in some crowdfunding experts, bringing in some other marketing experts or affiliate marketing experts to talk about their industry. And then how does that apply into, um, you know, branding and launching a series, which is, you know, the theme for tonight. And I think that there's a lot of crossover in a lot of these things that, that people could learn from. And then knowing, and the one thing I think I've done right on this time around is putting together the right team of people with expertise outside of my, my areas of expertise. And then, you know, and defining your level of success. But I, I think this is great for them. I've really enjoyed it. And I look forward to talking to you guys or listening to you guys uh, some more in the future. All right. Thanks. Awesome guys. Awesome. Really nice meeting. Yeah. Nice meeting all of you. Thank you. you too. Good night. Awesome. All right. All right.